One of my most popular videos on YouTube is one where I demonstrate the hip twist stretch. This is my favorite stretch to give beginners who have trouble getting into hip external rotation. People love this video. Andrew Shred 69 even said that it saved his life. Glad I can help Andrew. But for some people, the hip twist stretch was not so easy. A few viewers left comments on the video saying that they couldn't even get their ankle on the opposite knee to perform the stretch. And some others said that the stretch was so intense that they couldn't hang out in the position for a prolonged period of time. Well, hipsters, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this stretch even easier. So that way, even more of you can access it. I'll also explain what you should be doing if this modified version of the stretch is still too difficult for you to get into. What I could promise you is that before you finish this video, you'll be hopeful and not discouraged about eventually opening up your hip rotation. What's up hipsters? Coach Max here. The hip twist stretch has a special place in my heart. Like many of you out there, I had quite the experience the first time I did this stretch. I couldn't believe how well this stretch targeted those deep and tight hip muscles on the side of my hip. If you haven't tried the original version of the hip twist and you don't know what I'm talking about, then I highly recommend you go try the original version after you watch this video. I'll place an easy link to that original video somewhere wherever YouTube places its tags. I think right there. Once you learn the easier version and the original version, you can work on whatever feels better for you. There are two types of feedback I commonly get after people first try the hip twist stretch. The first is, holy moly, that hit the spot, man. If that's you, then hell yeah, it does. The second category of feedback that I get is that the stretch is too difficult. Either it's really hard for the person to get their ankle to the opposite knee, or they can get the ankle to the opposite knee, but it's too difficult to rotate to the side, or once they get to the side, it's very intense and it's hard to hang out in that position for too long. My goal of sharing the hip twist stretch in that original video was to give people an easy and gentle way to work on their external rotation. This was in direct response to my own experience, where I tried all of the external rotation videos out there on YouTube and found them too difficult and intense. And it wasn't until I found the hip twist stretch that I was able to hang out in an externally rotated position for a prolonged period of time. To hear that some people had so much trouble with the stretch went directly counter to what I was trying to accomplish by posting that video. So that's why I wanted to create this video to explain how to modify the hip twist stretch so more of you can get into it and get more out of it. Before I demonstrate this modified version, I wanna bring up an important point. If this modified version of the stretch is still too difficult for you to access, then I recommend you skip to the second part of this video. In the second part of this video, I explain why you can't get into this position. And it's not so much because of tight muscles, but more because of weak muscles. So for you, if you can't get into this modified position, the first step isn't so much to stretch out those muscles, but to strengthen them. Keep this in mind as you explore the modified hip twist stretch. Okay, so in the original version of the stretch, we're laying down and the knees are pretty close to our torso. And the closer the knees are to your torso, the more hip flexion that you're in. And the more hip flexion that you're in, the harder it's gonna be get the ankle to the knee and to get to stay in rotation as you spin. Getting more rotation with flexion is harder. So how do you get, how do you make it easier? You reduce the amount of hip flexion. You push your knees away from your torso. You're less flexed and the stretch is easier. So you could just experiment with that. Experiment with different distances, trying to get your ankle to your knee and maybe you have to go very far. Now, the farther you go, the less you're gonna get out of the stretch and you probably should focus on strength so that you can get a little bit closer to your torso, like I explained later in the video. But if you can still feel a stretch in the hip, even if the feet are pretty fur further away from you, then you're in good shape. Try it with both ankles. 
you don't want to set up much differently on one side compared to the other side. So once this feels good to you and you found a good distance, push the knee away from you and rotate to the side. Hands are rested, resting on your sides, and you're looking in the opposite direction. And from there you breathe. If you notice that when you're in this position, it gets a little bit too intense, you can still walk your legs further away from you to make it a little bit easier. Don't try to be a hero. Just make this position accessible. You want to be able to hang out in here for at least 30 seconds. A minute, two minutes, that's even better because the longer you can hang out there, the more you could be able to open up. And we ideally want to get the knee pointing right at the ceiling. Now that might be a little difficult at first, but it will just it will just show you where you want to target. And we're breathing. How intense should it be? I would say anywhere from four to seven, eight. If it's a nine, ten, and this is screaming at you and it's painful, walk your feet away. Further and further until the stretch calms down a little bit. And breathing. Okay, let's try the other side. Same thing, our feet are further away from us. We're not too, the knees aren't too close to the torso. They're as far as they need to be. Ankle goes to the knee. Push the knee away from you. And then rotate out to the side. I got the mic over here, so I'm going to take that out. Rotate to the side. Hands are calmly resting to your sides. And you look in the other direction. When you do this other side, how did that side feel compared to the other side? Maybe it's more intense, maybe it's less intense. Always, always cool to pay attention to how things feel when you're in the position. Then, again, if it gets too intense, if it's at a 10, it's uncomfortable, you could walk your feet further away from you to make it easier. And then the opposite is true too, right? If you don't feel much of a stretch, walk your feet up a little bit. Push your knee out more. Get that knee pointing straight to the ceiling. Play around with it. There's some general guidelines you want to keep in mind, but with any movement and you know, in any exercise, you kind of want to allow yourself to explore and be free and see what feels right for you. You don't want to be too rigid. <sighs> Breathing there. Experimenting with how far you are. And then coming out. If this doesn't feel great for you, don't be discouraged. I'm going to show you exactly what to do later in this video if this position is still too difficult. If this modified version still gave you trouble, then I recommend shifting your focus onto strength. What I mean by having trouble is you can't get into the position. Either you can't get your ankle to the knee or you can't hang out on one of these sides for more than 30 seconds. You cannot build flexibility on muscles that are super weak. You need to build some basic strength before you start seeing any improvements in flexibility and range of motion. Before I show you which exercises to focus on, I want to explain which muscles are weak when you can't get into this hip twist position. The first area to focus on would be your hip flexors. This is especially true if you're having trouble getting your ankle to your knee. This shows us that you're pretty weak in hip flexion. The second area to focus on would be your lateral hip muscles. These would be the exact muscles that you're trying to stretch in the hip twist position. It is a misconception that tight muscles need to be stretched and not strengthened. In fact, the exact opposite is true. Tight muscles is a clear indication that there's probably some weakness there. I am now going to share three exercises with you to help you strengthen these two muscle groups. The first exercise is a modified squat that I recommend you focus on first. Building strength in full body movements like the squat will help you build better movement than just about any other exercise. But sometimes these full body movements are pretty difficult and that's where correctives can really be valuable. Even if the squat's pretty hard for you right now, I still recommend you work on it, take your time and develop depth over time. 
But if you can't quite get that much out of the squat, then I would also recommend you add the other two corrective exercises I will show you after the squat. But either way, I recommend you periodically check your hip twist position. If it's getting better, then you know you're on the right track. So for this squat, I want you to elevate your heels and take a wide stance. Grab a very light kettlebell or dumbbell or whatever weight, and from there, you're just gonna start dipping down. Don't worry about depth. Go only as low as you can while not rounding your spine or having to break your form, right? So prioritize function and form as opposed to depth or heavy weight. Once you get more confident and you open it up a little bit, maybe in a few weeks, you could go lower. Maybe getting to parallel is a good goal. And it's helpful to record yourself to see what kind of progress you're making. And I just want to show you the front view here to see how wide we really are here, right? So as wide as, as, wide as you need to, to make it easy and as elevated uh, as you need to make it easy. So that's a great way to start to help build hip flexion and hip external rotation strength. Now for isolating the hip flexors, this is the hip flexor raises, right? So we're just, I want you to, barefoot's better because it gets slippery with socks. Hold on to something for support. And my kettlebell here is about, I think it's about 20 pounds, 25 pounds. So I would go even lighter than that. See the lightest kettlebell you can find, maybe five, 10 pounds in the beginning and just bang out reps there, okay? Doing the other side now, you may notice some difference in weakness from one side to the other. Maybe do a few extra reps or sets on the weaker side. Um, but other than that, this is a great way to start integrating some hip flexor strength, right? And it's exa it replicates exactly what you're trying to do in that hip twist position, which is raising your ankle and kind, of, and kind of rotating it to the opposite knee. And the last exercise that we're going to do, that we're going to demonstrate here, is the clamshell on the wall, right? So clamshell is a very popular exercise. Most of us know that. Um, but I want I like using it against the wall to make it a closed chain exercise. It just makes it a little bit easier to feel the hip muscles. So as I demonstrated, you're gonna put a light band. You don't need to go with the heaviest band here. Just go light, go somewhere where you could do a bunch of reps. And that's really what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to get eight to 15 to even 20 reps. And make sure your spine is, is neutral, right? It doesn't need to be really arched or, or rounded, just something that feels comfortable enough for you to get the hip working. And this is a great exercise to do right before you try the stretch because it's practicing that exact movement, right? You're putting a little resistance into the movement, which is a great way to build more strength and function in the position. A mistake I see too many people make in their movement journeys is they do too much. They do too many corrective exercises and overthink the process. The truth is, that is quite simple. Strengthen weak muscles before you stretch them. With that in mind, if you have trouble with the hip twist stretch, you don't need to stretch even more. Stretching muscles that are super weak might even make things more uncomfortable for you because you're pushing your body into ranges of motion that's not comfortable with. The nervous system does not feel safe in these larger ranges of motion and it'll let you know. If you decide to integrate the squat in your workouts, I recommend only doing it about once or twice a week. Just make sure you increase the intensity every time you do it. Either you add more weight, you go deeper, or you do more reps. For the kettlebell hip flexor raises and the clamshell on the wall, you could do those more often, maybe two to three times a week. But pay attention to how your body responds to those exercises. If you get sore, then you're probably doing too much and you gotta give your body a little bit more time to recover. Finally, like I mentioned earlier, I would test that hip twist position every now and then to see if you're improving. You can even try the hip twist stretch after you do those strength exercises because those muscles will all be activated and you'll be able to get much deeper than you typically would. It's also great for motivating you because you'll see how deep you can get and this will show you that you're on the right path. All right, hip I hope this video helped you if hip external rotation is a sticking point in your body. Let me know in the comments if this protocol helped you get more range of motion. If it didn't, I might have to just make another video. All right, see you in the next one. Happy hips.